And for the fourth time in 2023, we are racing with the European Le Mans series at Spa Francorchamps. And already a huge accident because several cars could not stop. The 22 United Autosports car is off the road, but who was that on the inside? It was clapping Panis, into two cars. 65, locked up way, way, way before the corner. Three, four cars off of the gravel. So that was Manuel Maldonado starting the Panis car and cleaning out two 20. further LMP2s. Rene Binder hooked up in that. Paul Lafargue in the 28 car. The 22 and Marino car. Sato yeah. is in the gravel trap at the first corner. So now Kiffin Simpson leads from the pole position, but the massive place gain is Rui Andrade up to second position for inter Europol competition. The deep blue car cuts across fully locked up and then smack so he initially collected the 28 of paul lafargue then the 30 car of rene binder but it's the blue car with the red room they're also spinning out marino sato into the gravel trap but the car nearest us in that little three group there is the 65 then there was a further wallet from an lmp3 car on the rear of marino sato and that's what's done the damage to the back of the 22. jack wolf may well be able to do the seven kilometers now to get his number 31 car back uh, to at least the end of the lap well we just heard safety car coming in the end of this lap cancel cancel and that's because because they'll need to clean the track again this is a lot of gravel but now Kiffin Simpson hits the loud pedal and begins to weave straight away to make sure that he's got plenty of tyre temp in the good years beneath him. It's Rui Andrade in the half green, half yellow into Europol competition car in second. Vlad Lomko in the uh, dark grey colours of Cool Racing third. And then this collection of LMP2 Pro-Ams led by Sally Jolic, leading Rodrigo Sales, Tom Ramvonpoi and Daniel Schneider. And it's side by side in LMP3 between the DKR car and the Team Virage machine and the four will get the play. So that's Alexander Bukatsov jumping ahead of the pole sitter Nick Adko. You're approaching a rouge great here run. comes Tom von Rompuy again around the outside. I think he's got the run here. It was a great run up uh, through Rouge and Radion for Ron Rompuy. Knows it very well indeed. And that local knowledge played well from the very moment he appeared in our sights. That always looked done, didn't it? They were very close anyway, leaving La Source and Kwani was a bit indecisive as to whether there was space to get alongside the number eight LMP3 car. Yeah. Daniel Schneider has lost control of the back of the car and ended up in the barrier. Oh, he caught the Crichton then do this Ferrari, potentially. Duncan Cameron now is fighting hard with Michael Fassbender. Fassbender, having rejoined from his recent pit stop, is now right in between these two Ferraris. And Fassbender has just got by Duncan Cameron for ninth position in the class. Yep, and uh, by the way, uh, Takeshi Kimura doing well here, pulling away here from Duncan Cameron. What we don't know is the tyre situation for the 55 car. Oh, oh, contact between the 22, which is still being driven by Marino Sato, and was that Vlad Lomko who has turned around on the exit of turn number 19? The mindset for a Michelin Le Mans Cup race should be that you still fuel. As round the outside now will go the number 81 car. Who's at the oh. wheel of that? It's Juan Pablo Montoya, who pulls off a cracking overtake on Andy Merrick, who really couldn't do much about that. Yeah, that was a very Montoya move, wasn't it? It's I'm coming through and dare you to stop him. More close contention here. This is 24 and 3. A move made there by the 24 car Nielsen Racing, Matthias Besch and Tatiana, that's not Tatiana Calderon, my apologies, that's Nat Berton, side by side, to, how could we put this, driven, oh, almost a touch there, side by side, Matthias Besch trying to, <laughs> to intimidate Nat Berton out of that corner, that wasn't going to work, now tries to go up the inside, well, this could get very, very tasty indeed, side by side, coming down to a rouge, Deep breath, everybody. Who's going to make it through here? They both are, but wow. in fact, the 24 is able to slot by Matthias Besch. Two abreast, fine through a rouge. When you get to Radion, really, though, uh, you have to be single file. This was the hip and shoulder from, uh, from Duncan no. Cameron on Michael Duncan, Fassbender no. a lap ago. That may well have thought, well, he's come then out of the pits and thought, I won't have enough fuel here. I've missed the point where I can get fueled. I just dived into the endurance pit lane. 
Oh, now there's an issue for the JMW Motorsport Ferrari oh. of Martin Berry Graham. That car, that's how, that's because he's been around it and clattered the barriers at the top of the hill at Radion, and there's damage to the right side of that car. Disaster running so well as well. Nicky team up the inside of Mattress Captures and now right round the outside will go the cool racing car. Was that Pachito again in number 47? Or perhaps the sister car in LMP2. We've got cars oh. on the grass way, way out wide. We'll find out precisely who it is in a moment or two. But the fastest lawnmower known to man there on the start of the Kemmel Strait. I think that was the cool racing car again. That is the it's 37. 37. Who supported that car? Nicole Lapierre. Oh, this is going to be, this is going to hurt. Bang, that was a big impact. Possibly the touch on the nose from the first bit of the wall took some of the energy out yeah. of it, but nevertheless, the spin for the new driver in the 44. Bear He's wing. been in the barrier, it's Gustav Berg. We were singing his uh, the family members' praises, but told to pick up the pace behind the safety car. And was that, well, that will have been a new set of Goodyear tyres, maybe cool and mounting the curb Gustav Berg pitching the Aston Martin into a spin and backwards into the tyre barrier on the exit of Le Com corner down towards the first corner will go the race leader Malta Jakobsen 68 laps now in the book darting to the inside line there is the Nielsen racing car number 24 of Ben Hanley who took that over during the safety car phase Looking out as well for the Algarve Pro Racing car of Alex Lynn, who's clearly having to clear some traffic from behind the order in the safety car. And Racing Team Turkey's Louis Delatrans looking for a safe way by the Zebra car number 83 to the high side. And these are the two leaders, is it, in Pro-Am? No, Malta Jakobsen leads that category. Over the curbing will go Louis Delatrans. So this is for second and third at the moment in the Pro-Am category. It, and Delatraz gets ahead of Vaxavier. That dust, it's a, a car off the road. It's a prototype. It's an LMP2 car and... It's the Nielsen car. It's the 24 car. It's car 24 of Ben Hanley, That's which has gone impact. way off wide at Curve Paul Frere. Is that not where the old circuit used to join, just beyond Campos Corner? Somewhere, yeah, it is turn 15. We've had a Pro-Am car take outright victory in the opening race of the season, as now very much on the accelerator is Richard de Giras. Tire temperature is going to be a big doubt here as they hit the brakes for the first time into La Source at top speed. Side by side, between 34 and 83 again. Is that contact? This time it's the 83, both of them off the track. 83 goes through. And another. somebody else has left the road. It's another prototype. It's, it's the 43. 43. And that car had been running quite high up in the middle portion of the race for inter Europol competition. It's Jonathan Aberdeen, 10th place through the last split. Richard de Guerras ahead of Sebastian Montoya. And Alex Lynn, you can bet your bottom dollar, is going to be coming through here from third position as quick as he can. And Mathieu Vaxivier is trying to position his car as best as possible to get the advantage on Louis Delatraz. Now it's full throttle. Delatraz hits the right-hand pedal, as does Vaxivier. They're going to be side by side into the bus stop she came, but Vaxivier to the high line of Montchamont. I think he's got him, that and he did. It doesn't even need the inside line for the bus stop she came, as long as Vaxivier can get it stopped in time. Here comes Delatraz, though, to try and get the inside line for turn 19, but Vaxivier fends him off. He saw that happening. Here are the two Porsches, nose to tail in LMGTE. What a fabulous way to end this era of GT racing at Spa-Francorchamps. Nothing between these two Porsches at the moment. Picariello with a slight advantage. He darts to the left-hand side of the track to defend from Matteo Cairoli. It's an LMP2 win, and it's not a Pro-Am car, amazingly, even though all the cars behind Alex Lynn are. Alex Lynn for Algarve Pro Racing will get this car's second win of the season. 25 wins it for Kiffin Simpson, James Allen, and Alexander Lynn with his pole position, of course, from yesterday as well. The most bizarre way of winning a race from lights to flag. Pole position to victory for Algarve Pro. Cool Racing win Pro-Am and a second overall ahead of AF Corsa and Team Turkey. Cool Racing win in LMP3 and Proton competition from pole take victory in GTE.
What a result for Algarve pros, Kiffin Simpson, James Allen and Alex Lynn. It's sometimes you win a race on, on pace and overtaking and sometimes you win it through strategy and, uh, and quick thinking and I think today it was the latter that won us today's race. Um, so I'm super proud of the team and, uh, and everyone at Algarve Pro Racing. A huge result for Stu and Sam Cox's small family outfit Algarve Pro. They claim victory second and third overall and first and second in Pro-Am. Cool Racing 37 and the 83 AF Corsa crew. Oh. More champagne moments for Algarve Pro. They topped the overall LMP2 podium with the 65 Panis car that caused all the carnage early on in second. Cool Racing's 47 crew in third. And that means that Algarve Pro now lead the team's trophy as we head into the double season finale, appropriately enough, on the Algarve in Portimao. After an up and down race, our LMP2 Pro-Am winners were Cool Racing's crew, Alex Kwani, Nico Lapierre and Malte Jakobsen. Like I felt like we had quite a good pace and was able to keep the gap down to the APR car. But then at the first pit stop after the safety car, as we stopped earlier to put me in the car, we had to fuel for a few seconds longer. So I lost the position to the Algarve car, but we managed to keep the position, but it was super tight with the restarts and Louis right behind and so on. But we, I had a lot of fun out there. Well, the cool racing result did not change. Second place at the line, AF Corsa picked up a four second penalty for accelerating too soon out of a full course yellow and Racing Team Turkey a two second penalty for the same offence. That means Racing Team Turkey is reclassified as second in the race, AF Corsa as fourth and that means that AF Corsa is now just four points behind Racing Team Turkey in the LMP2 Pro-Am standings. The race in LMP3 was as crazy as it was in all the other classes. Vichy went to the number 17 cool racing crew, Adrian Keeler, Marcus Siebert and Alejandro Garcia. The most crazy uh, race of all season. Uh, at the end, it helped us a lot the safety cars, you know, and all, all the crashes because we were quite tight with uh, with uh, our gasoline. But yeah, yeah, at the end it helped us. We had the luck on our side, and yeah, we we brought it home, and this is perfect for the championship. I think we are now even two races um, uh, like on an advantage against the other competitors. So we are just happy now, and we're just now gonna enjoy our race win with my two teammates and. Marcos did an amazing job. Behind the cool racing trio, into Europol's 13 car finished in second. Euro International from Pole finished third. They lie fourth in the points, but cool racing have a monumental advantage heading into the final two races in Portimao. Our LMGC winners started on pole and finished first. Surely then it was plain sailing for the Proton competition trio, Ryan Hardwick, Zach Rubichon and Alessio Picariello. It was a really interesting race with a lot of uh, fuel saving uh, fights and uh, I enjoyed it fully and at the end fighting with uh, Matteo Cairoli was the best I could ask for because he's a good friend of mine and in my opinion he's one of the best drivers around here so uh, yeah I enjoyed it very much. Post-race, Proton's number 16 crew were penalised 10 seconds for accelerating too early out of a full-course yellow zone, handing victory to the 60 Iron Lynx team, second place Formula Racing, down to third Proton. And that means that they are tied at the top of the championship, Proton and Iron Lynx on equal points. And with two races left, there's still everything to play for in Portugal. It will be the grandest of grand finales in Portimao, a double race weekend to finish the ELMS for 2023.